You learned that service workers are background processes which can listen to events. Now, which events can we listen to? Now, fetch is one of the most important events. It is triggered whenever the browser or page related JavaScript, so JavaScript running because it was loaded by the index.html or by any HTML page, initiates a fetch, which is a HTTP request. Now that could be because you have an image tag in your HTML code and you obviously point to some image resource there. And when the browser tries to get that image to display it, it actually sends such a fetch request. You can react to that fetch request in the service worker and you can basically think of the service worker serving as a network proxy. Every HTTP request sent via fetch and that is every request sent by the browser due to HTML loading some assets, goes through the service worker. So whenever you load a CSS JavaScript file because you import it in your HTML file, that triggers fetch. Whenever you use the fetch API, you will learn more about it in the next course module. Whenever you use that API in your own JavaScript code, you also trigger such a fetch request. Important, you don't trigger a fetch request if you use the normal traditional AJAX request in JavaScript. So the HTTP request or any package like Axios which builds up on that, that won't trigger the fetch event. So with that, the cool thing is, since most requests go through the service worker, as soon as you start listening to the fetch event at least, you have ways of manipulating these requests. You can block them, you can return cached assets, you can control them basically. Really powerful. Another cool event are push notifications. These are sent from another server. Basically, every browser vendor, like Google for Chrome and Mozilla for Firefox, has its own push web push server. You can send push notifications to these servers from your own server, and then these vendor servers of the browser vendors will send this push notification to your client application. And in the service worker, you can listen for such a push event, so for such an incoming push request. Why do you do this in the service worker and not in the normal JavaScript page? Because remember what I said, service workers live in the background and they even live once all your pages were closed. So push notifications obviously are all about getting you as a user back into the application after you closed it. If you are still in the application, yeah, you may still want to push notify the user, but it's far more valuable if your phone is in your pocket. Make your phone ring, give you a push notification. With service workers, you can get this behavior you know from native applications into your browser web applications. And service workers are the key because they can react to that push notification. Now, once you got the push notification, you often want to show an alert, a notification to the user in your application or on the phone. Now, if the user interacts with that, for example, he taps on that notification, you can also listen to that interaction in the service worker to do something with it. Show an example page, load something from the cache, whatever you want to do. So you can react to user interaction with notifications in the service worker. Why do you do that in the service worker and not in the normal JavaScript code? Because again, that might not be loaded. There might not be a tab open with your web application. The service worker always runs though. So it's the best place to handle notification interaction. Another useful event is background synchronization. Imagine a case where you don't have that good of an internet connection and you send a post. Now, if the internet connection is bad, that will fail. Now, some browsers, mainly Chrome right now, but support is getting better as for all these features you learn in the course. Some browsers allow you to use background synchronization, which means you store a certain action if it can't be executed right now, and you execute it once internet connection was reestablished. Now, to know when this is the case, the browser, which supports background synchronization, will issue a certain event or emit a certain event to which you can listen in the service worker. 
why indie service worker for the same reason as before maybe you already closed the application well the good thing is the service worker is still alive and therefore if internet connection is established again you can react to it in the service worker and execute that action you stored and you couldn't execute earlier so it allows you basically to do something once the internet connection is re-established very useful too and then there are also events which are related to the service worker lifecycle. So the installation, activation. I'll come back to the different lifecycle phases and how you activate and use the service worker in the next lectures. You can hook into these lifecycle phases and execute some code, for example, whilst the service worker is getting installed. These are the main, the most important events you can listen to in a service worker. You will see them all. In this course, we're going to cover everything about that. You will see how to really take advantage of service workers. But with that, I'd say, let's dive into registering a service worker and understand how we actually set one up and how we tell the browser that this is not a normal JavaScript code we execute all the time, but that we actually want to register a background process.